Hello all and a welcome to our discussion on birth and the newborn stage. Um, as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, just want to chat, I am here, I'm available. You can email me or you can uh, message me um, via Blackboard. Um, that is all for this little introduction and we will go ahead and get started. So our learning object objectives for this week are to describe the typical three-stage process of childbirth, discuss the factors that make some births more complicated than others, summarize common childbirth options, and reflect on the advantages and disadvantages of a range of medical interventions, settings, and attendants, and finally give examples of some of the tools available to birth attendants, healthcare providers, and new parents for understanding how infants are adapting in the first minutes, days, and weeks after birth. Because yes, the birthing process is difficult on the mother um, and on loved ones who are supporting the mother, but it's also a very big transition for baby as well. So overview, we will be looking at the birth process, the stages of childbirth. We will be looking at some common complications of childbirth. We'll be looking at childbirth options and then also the APGAR um, neonatal assessment. So starting off with the birth process, there are three main stages of childbirth um, or labor. So the first stage is contractions, dilation, and effacement. Um, this is the latent phase of labor. Um, and it's marked by widely spaced contractions that are not very painful, like you can talk through them. Um, they may not have a um, like average time between them, they come and go. Um, and that is the first stage of labor. The second stage is uh, the delivery of the infant. It's an active phase of labor. Uh, contractions become more frequent are increasingly painful and tend to have um, like an average every two minutes or so, or three minutes, five minutes. Um, it's just more an active phase of labor. Um, and then the third stage is the placental expulsion. So baby has been delivered. However, the placenta has to be delivered as well. So um, the placenta is delivered about 15 minutes after birth, um, depends on the person, and the placenta is then examined for any signs of abnormalities. Um, and the placenta is what encases the baby. So there's your uterus, then there's, or your uterus, there is the uterus, and then the placenta encases the fetus inside of the uterus. The umbilical cord is attached to the placenta and provides nutrients for the baby. Um, and yeah. Alrighty, so now that we've gone through the three stages of childbirth, we're gonna discuss some complications. Um, this may be triggering depending on your own personal experience. So if you would like to skip this, please go ahead. Um, I just wanted to let you know before I start talking about this. Um, so one complication is failure to progress, which is a premature rupture of membranes without intensifying contractions. So essentially the water breaks, however, labor stalls, essentially. Labor does not continue or um, go into that like second stage of labor where the baby is delivered. Um, and this can be a complication because it increases risk of infection. Um, there's breach presentation. So babies are born head first. Typically a breach presentation is when the infant is born with its feet first or its bottom first. So it's kind of like folded in half. Um, preterm birth, a preterm Birth is a birth that is before 37 weeks gestation. A uh, very preterm is before 32 weeks gestation. Um, the rates of preterm birth vary across racial and ethnic groups in the United States. And we'll actually be looking at 
um, the varying rates of preterm birth across racial and ethnic groups in one of the scholarly articles that are part of the research for this week. Um, also, technology in the neonatal intensive care unit has led to better survival rates overall um, in the USA, uh, which is fantastic. There's also another complication is low birth weight, which is less than five and a half pounds. Very low birth weight is less than three and a quarter pounds. Um, the incidence of fetal growth impairment, low birth rate, and very low birth rate varies across racial and ethnic groups in the United States. Um, and then there's also post-date birth. So babies born after their due date um, who often weigh considerably more than average. This can be a complication or this can be very natural. Um, it is truly dependent on each uh, birthing person as well as each child. So another complication of childbirth um, can occur with twins or multiple births. Um, this does increase complication or risk of complications. Um, twins and other multiple pregnancies have an elevated risk of preterm birth, low birth rate, and other complications such as funky positions like a breech position. Uh, the rate of twins and other multiples has increased due to the increased availability and success of assisted, assisted reproductive technology. We talked about that um, a couple weeks ago, or it might have been last week where um, ART has increased the number of multiples being born. Uh, however, we do have the technology to safely birth multiples uh, more so than we did even two decades ago. The older age of childbearing in the United States is another reason for increases in twins and other multiple births. Um, the median age for a um, person giving birth is starting to increase or has been increasing over the past two decades. So childbirth options, uh, there are medical interventions. So expectant parents often take childbirth classes and learn about specific medical interventions and techniques and options. Uh, one of the medical interventions is labor induction, which is administering a hormone, which is normally Pitocin to initiate contractions. Um, the pros and cons, and obviously, encourage whoever is giving birth to uh, listen to their doctor, midwife, um, doula, uh, and lean on their expertise. There's also electronic fetal monitoring. It uses sensors to monitor fetal signs during labor. Uh, this can be around the belly. This can also be a little probe-like attachment that goes onto the top of the fetus's head through the cervix. Um, if you are interested, I do encourage you to look more into it. It's a very fascinating realm of study and just research in general. Uh, pain relief. Uh, um, there's anesthetics to help women in labor manage pain. Uh, episiotomy is an incision made uh, to widen the vaginal opening uh, and it supposedly is to help baby come out a little bit more easily and to prevent tearing. However, I do encourage you to do your own research on that and make create your own opinions and beliefs on whether research does prove that this helps or hinders. And there's also cesarean delivery, a surgical procedure used when the vaginal delivery is not possible or when a um, cesarean delivery is elected by the uh, birthing person. More childbirth options, hospital, home, uh, birthing center. There are many different places in which you can, for the most part, safely deliver a child nowadays. Uh, nearly all U.S. births take place in a hospital. However, it's very common practice in European countries to go to a birthing center or to even give birth at home with a midwife uh, and or doula, well, not or doula and a doula present. Um, women who are good candidates for home birth are 
healthy. So you can't be high risk. You have to be a low risk pregnancy. Um, it has to be a single fetus uh, in a head first presentation with a gestational age between 36 and 41 weeks. Um, depending on the location, childbirth attendance may include an obstruction, 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 OBGYN. <laughs> It's a physician trained to assist and perform procedures during labor and delivery, a certified nurse midwife. Uh, if you are in a hospital setting, if you are not in a hospital setting, then it might just be a certified midwife and not have a nursing credential along with that. Uh, and then birth doula is a trained layperson who provides non-medical assistance. So it's guidance, encouragement, praise, reassurance, and can also advocate on the birthing person's behalf while they are busy giving birth to a child um, during labor and delivery. Oh, it is, there we go. All right, so now we are moving on to neonatal assessment, the very first neonatal assessment that typically takes place and actually has to be passed before baby goes home is called the APGAR, APGAR score. The APGAR score reflects the newborn's condition immediately and five minutes after birth. Um, so this, uh, there's also reflexes. Uh, neonates possess uh, innate reflexes, many of which disappear within the first few months of life. Uh, there's also sensory abilities. Newborns can feel, taste, smell, and hear. Their vision is the least well-developed sense at birth, uh, and they can typically see about, what is it, like 7 to 13 inches? Don't quote me on that. It's not a lot of inches. It's the amount of inches that is the typical distance from a uh, person's breast to their face so that um, infants can see your face while they are being fed. And that helps with bonding and attachment and things like that. Um, adaptations during the neonatal period. So there's states of arousals, including sleep-wake states. Uh, these change during the first few months after birth for baby. Uh, and then standardized neonatal assessments can help new parents learn about their infant's capabilities and preferred styles of interaction. Um, if you continue to study neonatal assessment um, and just the neonatal period in general, you may be able to help parents um, figure out their baby's preferred style of interaction as well. Um, and then the APGAR score, um, stands for, so the A is for appearance, uh, that's the skin color, complexion, uh, they're looking for yellowness or blue, yellowness is a sign of jaundice, blue is a sign of oxygen deprivation, um, the pulse, they're looking at the pulse of the baby, uh, grimace is, uh, <laughs> their irritability reflex, which is kind of cute, um, if they respond to stimulation, things like that. Activity, uh, they're looking at muscle tone, at their movement, um, it, whether they can do flexion, extension, things like that. And then respiration, they're looking at breathing, um, if it's weak or irregular or strong, um, or if there's no breathing at all. So in summary, we have gone over the three stages of birth. We've gone over um, typical complications that can occur. Uh, and we've gone over childbirth options. And we've also gone over neonatal assessments. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, just want to chat, as always, please email me, message me. Um, I am here to support you. Uh, thank you for listening to this week's mini lecture, and I will see everybody next week.